Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 32 in our incredible new tutorial series where you are learning artificial intelligence on the Jetson Nano. I will need you to pour yourself a nice big mug of iced coffee. And because I am so excited about this lesson, you may also pour yourself a nice big cup of hot coffee. Yes, this will be a double caffeine lesson. And really, this lesson is very exciting. Like, this is kind of the culmination of those first 31 lessons where we're really doing real artificial intelligence. We're tracking an object, and then we're interacting with the world through our GPIO pins by controlling a servo. Okay, let me ask you guys to go ahead and get your gear out. And as you're doing that, let me, as always, pause and give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. Your support is really encouraging me and is keeping me in premium coffee beans. And it is the coffee beans that keep these lessons coming. If you guys are not helping out yet, think about looking down in the description below. There is a link over to my Patreon account. Think about hopping over there and hooking a brother up. But enough of this shameless self promotion. Let's go ahead and jump in and look at today's most exciting lesson. First of all, let me ask you guys, were you able to do this homework? What the homework was, was I kind of showed you a couple of lessons ago how to track an object by using contours. And then in the last lesson, which was lesson number 31, I showed you how to control the servo from the Jetson Nano and your homework for this week was to track an object using the servos where the object that you train on stays in the center of the view of the camera. So as you move the object around, the camera moves via the servos in order to keep the object of interest in the center of the uh, frame. You guys, leave me a comment down below, or if you're on the premiere, let me know, did anybody do this? Okay, did anybody do this? I want you to type a comment down below if anybody actually did this on their own. I'll show you how to do it today, but I'm wondering if anyone did it on their own. Let me show you what we are working towards. And uh, let's come over here, and let's see. I need to open up my terminal. And then let me just show you what we're, we're working towards here. This is, this is the goal for today, is for you guys to be able to do this. And you guys know that with this program where you have to fire off those server servos and get the I2C connected, it takes five or six seconds. Boom, look at that. <clears throat> let me go to more of a good demonstration view here. So in the upper left of your screen, you can see that we are tracking on the tip of the marker and if I move it it moves if I move it it moves up down left right and boom double chest bump for tracking an object in real time this is just really 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 super exciting for me let me get out of your way and you can kind of look right above me here and you can see the servo moving as I move the object up and down left and right I can lay it down kinda roll it okay that's not very well focused let me see if I can give it something to focus on there to get it in better focus It's just hard to get this thing to focus especially when it's moving okay that looks a lot better all right, now we've got it in focus, and you see I can just roll this across, roll it across. It stays where it's supposed to, stays in the center. Okay, did you guys do this? Now let me ask you, there's a couple of things I want you to notice about my solution. My solution is, is that as the pin is not moving, I'm not, I don't have any jitter in the servo. So leave me another comment down below. You guys that got it working, did you get it working where there wasn't any glitchiness when the thing is smooth? Also, did you get it? Another thing I want you to try or tell me on is notice that at some point you cannot, the servo can't turn any 
further because it can only go to 120 degrees. And so if you get to where the servo can't go any further, does your program crash or does it just do the best it can and stop? Okay, does your program crash if you go beyond what the servo can track? That's an important one. And the other one is, can you go pretty fast for big changes? You see, I can move this quickly, and as I move it quickly, it stays up with it. So if you're going too slow, you know, you can move the device, and then you lose track on it because your servo's not tracking far enough and so fast enough. And so actually, this is going to get into some of the things that you got to think about when you're doing control systems. You want them to be snappy, <clears throat> but you want them to be stable. And those two things kind of play off against each other. You can make it very snappy, but then it's jittery and isn't stable. Or you can make it very stable and it's very slow. So we're going to learn a little bit about control systems today as we do this. So again, double coffee day today because this is a really uh, a pretty long a pretty long lesson. We're going to learn a lot today, but it's a lot of fun. I am so excited about this lesson. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to go up over and we need to fire up our our Visual Studio. We are working in the Pi, Pi Pro folder and then I've got so much nonsense here. We are going to come to, uh, we are in the Open CVs and now we are going to create a new program in Open CV and I believe that we are on Open CV Program 20 and we'll call this, <clears throat> uh, we'll call this camera track dot py the dot py is pretty important okay just because we do not want to go through all of the part of setting up the, the contours, remember how we set up the contours and all of that sort of stuff. We don't want to have to go through and reset up all those uh, contours. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to uh, the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. And I need to now move that out of the way. I know how you guys hate that little window getting in your way. So we will, uh, let's see, we will move it where it is nicely out of the way in the corner so you can still see what the servo is doing here okay you can still see what the servo is doing here as we develop this but the program is not running right now because I closed it okay so <clears throat> you want to go to toptechboy.com and you want to find AI on the Jetson Nano Lesson 28 so if you just click on this little search bar you should be able to do that you should be able to get to lesson number 28 pretty quickly and then you can come down here click on the two little pages it selects all the text control C will copy that and then we're going to come back to Visual Studio and I'm going to get this in a nice view here let's see okay Just trying to get ah that is not good okay and I can pull this down a little further okay and now I right mouse click and I paste and I get that program that we kind of started with earlier and then at this point I can move the navigator out of your way so you can just get the stuff you want okay now on this remember that we are now at least I am using a webcam and so to get this thing to run I need to make sure that I am turning on the webcam and it looks like I must do that under all the trackbar stuff and let's see here. These, this is for the Raspberry Pi camera, so that would not work very well. So I'm going to comment those out. And then for the webcam, I'm going to uncomment that. And I believe for me it's going to be one, camera one. It'll either be probably zero or one for you. And so let's just run this to make sure that we haven't broken the program that this thing actually is running. Okay, that is running, and I am wondering why. Oh, I've got to tune this thing in if I'm going to find the uh, if I'm going to find the pin. But let's just verify that we are uh, we are here going to find the pin. Let's see. Okay, I'm just kind of adjusting my track bars a little bit 
and let's see if I have that. Yeah, that looks pretty good as far as tracking the pin. So just wanted to make sure that that was still working. And so now I can cue out of this. And now let's go in and let's start figuring out how are we going to make this thing track the pin with the servos. As the pin moves, we want to have the servos keep it in the center of the frame. So the first thing that we're going to have to do is a little bookkeeping. So we need to turn the servos on. So we need to say from Adafruit servo kit import servo kit. And this will work for you if you did the lesson last week. If you haven't done the lesson last week, you got to go back to that because that's where we sort of kick the servos on and import them and configure our Jetson Nano where it'll work with the servo. So this isn't going to work for you if you haven't done lesson number 31 yet. Okay, so that's what we want to do. And now we want to create a ah, servo kit. That looks good. And now we want to say kit equal servo kit and channels equal 16. Also in that lesson 31 we show you all the hardware to get your servo working where you're using this little board and you're using the Jetson Nano and you've got everything put together. So all that was in lesson 31 and here we're just adding that code to make the uh, to make the uh, servos work. So what we're doing here is we are importing from our Adafruit servo kit library the the uh, uh, function servo kit and now we are creating our own servo and what we're doing is we're calling this object kit and our object kit is equal to servo kit and then we've got to tell it that we've got 16 channels because this little board here it can run 16 different servos so we just got to tell it we have a 16 uh, servo kit that we're running here. Okay and then I I believe that uh, what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and we need to give it some initial values. So pan is like this. So I'm just going to set pan is equal to 90 between 0 and 180. That's kind of in the middle. And then I'm going to say tilt is equal to 45. And that would be kind of looking down. All the way down would be 0, 45, so that would kind of be pointing roughly towards this pin, if I am not mistaken. And then I'm going to go ahead and set those servos to this position, because I just want to see if the thing works. So now I'm going to say kit.servo, <coughs> which servo, 0, and I do believe that should be the pan. And then we're going to say dot .angle is equal to pan, so that should set the pan to 90 degrees. Okay, because pan is 90. And now we're going to say kit.servo. The other one will be servo 1 dot angle is equal to tilt, which we just set. All right, let's just go ahead and run this and make sure that it runs. Okay. In four or five seconds to get the servo talking. Okay, so don't panic yet. Okay, I'm starting to panic. Okay, no, I didn't panic. Okay, what's the good news? We saw the servo move, and it's not tracking right now, and it hasn't even, like, really found the pin yet. Okay, but at least we know that we're talking to the servo, and the camera's working, and so that's really good. What you guys will see, hopefully, as you watch me code is... Ooh, when you watch me code, I like to run the program every little bit, and that way I kind of keep it running. Because if you do a whole lot of coding and then run it, if you've got a problem, it's a lot harder to find it. Okay, so we have, we're talking to the servo, so that is good news. All right. And then we did this define nothing for pass. Remember, that had to do with our track bars. Then we're coming in, and we are setting up a bunch of track bars. OK, so that's all good. And let's see here. I need to change this view a little bit. So we are well on our way to success. OK, now even though we say display width is uh, 640 and display height is 480, that is kind of used if we're sending it to the Raspberry Pi camera. But because we're using the webcam, we really want to know 
what the webcam is set to. So what we're going to do is we are going to say width. We're going to go out and grab the width that the webcam is using because if we're going to track, we kind of got to know what the size is for sure. So, <coughs> so I'm going to say width is equal to cam.get and then I'm going to say cv2 dot cap underscore prop so that's like camera property frame okay camera property frame and then what I want is down there width okay and then similarly I want cv2 dot cap underscore frame underscore property underscore did I oh I misspelled frame I knew that because it didn't pop up with anything prop and then height does that look good h-e-i-g h-t Okay, so that should get the, ah, that was crazy what I just did, wasn't it? Those should be two different lines. Okay, so width is cam.get cv2.cap underscore prop underscore frame. Okay, that's good, frame width. And then what we're going to do here is on the next line is we're going to say height is equal to cam.get and then we are going to get the height. Okay, and then let's just print uh, width and then we'll print width and then let's print height and then let's print height and so let's just make sure that we're getting that and that should just print that one time so let's go ahead and run that and see what happens if I haven't made a mistake waiting that's good it didn't die so maybe that's a good sign Excellent time to sip coffee. Ah! Cap frame prop height. What did I do? Oh, okay. I, just, I put it in there wrong. Okay, so let me come here. You guys hopefully caught, uh, caught that. So underscore prop underscore frame. And there's height, the second one down. So I'll just go and select it. Okay, let's run this thing again. And boom, that thing ran. Okay, so now let's come over and let's look at what it said. So it said that the width is 640 and the height is 480 for the webcam. And the default is you just fire it up. And so that's good. But just, and we kind of knew that, but just as we're going through, let's use this measured value so that this program would work even if we had a different camera, if it fired up in a different orientation or a different resolution. So that is really good very happy with where we are right now so now what we need to do is we need to come back over here to our code I need to quit out of this program because that's basically we just want to make sure that we knew what our camera was doing okay and then I printed that out let's see here where were we Okay, so that's where I got that. So now we're starting knowing where the uh, camera is. And so then we come in and we read our frame from the camera. So that's good. That is not going to change. Uh, let me get over here. I really wish I had a person in the control room. It's very hard for me to be doing all the window control and management, production management as I'm coding. You know, it's a lot harder than you might think it would be, but yet I do the best I can. Okay, so we read that and then we are gonna come in and we're gonna read all of our track bars, right? You should know all this stuff. It's reading all those track bars. 
and then it is doing the masking so you should be very care you should be very comfortable with all the masking because we did that earlier then we <clears throat> uh, after we create the mask then we get our contours and then we sort our contours and then one of the things that we know is is that we uh, then step through the contours we've got them in the right order so the first one's going to be the biggest one and then we step through those contours and we draw a frame around what we are interested in so that all really makes sense so we're going to step through those contours okay we are going to step through those contours uh, and then we're going to find the area of each one and then we are going to find or we're going to find the area of the one that we are on in the for loop and then we are going to get the xy position of its of the upper left corner of the bounding rectangle and then the width and the height and so this is just kind of imagining a box around the contour and giving us the parameters of the box and then what we do is we say if the area is greater than 50 if the area is greater than 50 then we are going to draw a rectangle around that box and I think at this point I might just expand this on out okay and then I'll try to just make sure that as I'm writing the line of code it's going to show okay so then what we do here is we draw a rectangle around our uh, object okay now what we want to do is if we're going to track it we've got a rectangle around the object but if we're going to track it we need to know where the center of the object is well how would we do that well we got to kind of calculate it so what would it be it would be the we're going to call it the object x that is the x position the x position of the center of the rectangle around the object so that would sort of be the exposition of the center of the object we're tracking and so that is going to be equal to x plus w over 2 and width is this width up here the width of the box and so what you're going to do is you're going to have a box drawn around the object of interest and then the width of that box is w and so I want to take the left position of the box and add half the width and that should be the center does that make sense I hope it does then if I have an object X what else am I going to need an object Y and that is going to be equal to Y plus H divided by 2 okay because the height of the object is H and so now I should have kind of like where is as this thing moves around as this thing moves around what is the X position and what is the Y position of the center of the object well if I'm going to move that to the center of the frame it's kind of important to know that okay so we got that now I am not going to worry about that too much but now what you got to think is you're going to have an error and that is there is some center of your screen and there's a center of the object center of the screen center of the object okay in X and Y and X and Y well the difference in X position is the X error the difference in Y position is the Y error so we got to figure out how far off are we so I'm going to say the error and kind of like what I'm going to say the X error I'm going to call it error pan like how far am I off in my pan <clears throat> and that is going to be my my pan is changing X so that would be object X okay why is that object X because this is object X here okay minus what is so it's, it's like here's the center of the screen here's the center of the object what is the error it's the center of the object minus the center of the screen center of the screen is not changing what is the center of the screen the center of the screen is width divided by 2 right and that's why we actually calcul calculated or ran out and got the width all the way back up here width is the width of 
the frame that the camera is grabbing and height is the height of the frame that the camera is grabbing. So the reason I'm kind of going over this quite a bit is you've got to sort of keep up with the difference between the center position of the object versus the center position of the screen. And the object is W wide. The screen is width wide. So does that make sense? So then we're going to have an error in our tilt. And our error in tilt is going to be object Y minus ob object, object Y minus height divided by 2. That looks really good. So now I have my errors. Okay. So what do I want to do with that? Well, I want to move the servo. So I got to give it a new pan. Remember, I initially set pan was uh, pan was 90 and tilt was 45. Well, now I got to change that because I have an error, right? So let's say if error in the pan is greater than one. <coughs> so if the error in the pan is greater than one, what do I want to do? Well, that means pan is too big. So what do I want to do? Pan equal pan minus one. Okay. What happens if error pan, okay, what happens if error pan is uh, less than, okay, so if error pan is greater, do I want to say, no, I'm going to say if error pan is greater than zero. Okay, if error pan is greater than zero, then pan is too big. So I want to make pan smaller. So I'm going to make pan is equal to pan minus one. Okay, now if error pan is less than zero, that means I'm not far enough. So what do I want to do there? I want to make pan equal pan plus 1. So if the error is negative, I want to increase the pan. If the error is positive, I want to decrease the pan. And then you say, well, what about 0? Well, if the error is 0, you don't want to do anything. You're right on it. And similarly, I need to do this nonsense for tilt. Let's see if I can do this without something ugly happening. Okay. So similarly, what I want to do here is I want to look at if the error in tilt, if the error in tilt is greater than zero, then I want to say tilt minus one, tilt equal tilt minus one. And if the error in the tilt is less than zero, then I want to say tilt equal tilt plus one because if, if the error is negative that means the tilt is too little I need to increase tilt does that make sense if the tilt error is greater than zero then I need to make tilt less so I'm trying to drive the error to zero now this is the absolute simplest and dumbest and most straightforward way that you can do control and it's just like hey if I'm too big become smaller. If I'm too small, become bigger. This is the simple, simplest type of feedback that you can do. So tilt is equal to tilt plus one in that case. Okay, then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to apply those. We're going to need to apply those values. And so what we will need to do here is now that we've calculated them, we need to apply them. And be mindful of your indention. I do believe uh, I do believe I need to indent one more, so I need to be kind of lined up with those if statements. So then I'm going to say kit dot servo, which one zero, okay? Kit dot servo uh, dot angle is equal to uh, is equal to pan, okay? And then I'm going to say kit dot servo. And which one? Servo one dot angle is equal to tilt. All right. You know, 
it might be that simple to kind of get it sort of almost working. All right, sort of almost working. So let's hold our breath and run this thing and see what happens. I don't think I quite got it running. Here we go. Okay, now it's not finding anything, so what we need to do is we need to see if we can tune in on that object. And so let's see. I need to come on up and come on up. Ooh, now it's finding everything. We actually need to probably program those tune values in there. And the program crashed. We need to program those tune values in there because, uh, let's see if that, yeah. OK, you know what we're going to do is let's just go ahead and see if we can get those values. Because since this is live control, you want to make sure, hey, this thing is actually sort of working almost. OK. So I need to, and we're going to put these values that we determine in there because we do not want this thing to go crazy because it's not locking on to something when the program starts working. Okay, so now this is kind of interesting. All right, one thing, a couple of things that I see. So remember, it's like 96 to 120 seems to work. So let's cut this off. Uh, sorry. 96 to 120. Let's reset our track bars where... Uh, the hue lower was... 96 and then the hue upper was 120 because you see just when we fire the thing up since we're actively controlling those, those servos we need to kind of have it pre-tuned for this so that the servos don't just go crazy it's a little little disconcerting when the servos are going all over the place okay so that should get us close i think to to maybe locking on to that and then on the on the other track bar the other hue that we're tracking on we just want to kind of disable it so what we want to do is we want to have uh, the way we would disable it would be if we had upper lower than lower that would basically turn it off like that so that should turn it off and the other thing is really if you think about it we're still stepping through these contours and this for loop but you only want to work with the first one right so after the first time through uh, what you want to do here is you want to break, okay? And what that's just basically saying is you'll go through this one time and you'll break and then you'll go grab another frame. Because if I have this and then a little glitchy noise here, I don't want the servos to move from here to here. I only want to move the servos based on the largest object and that'll help us kind of ignore some of this noise, all right? So let's come back over here and run this thing and see what's going to happen. All right, let's see. Waiting on the servo. Okay. Uh, look at that. It's, it's tracking on that, so that's okay. Now look at this. I would say, oh, it crashed. Okay, look at this. One of the things that happened is we got a value out of range error, and that means that we move this we move this further than what it could track. So make note, if this moves out of the field of view, the program crashes. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It is a bad thing. Should programs crash when something like that happens? No. Is the answer to make sure we keep the pin in the field of view? No, the answer is to make our code better. But let's first just see if we can get this thing tracking better. Okay, so let's come back over here and let's sort of see what we're doing. Okay, so look at that. Now, what is the good news? I really think that this thing is tracking. Yep. 
you see I think this thing is tracking right let's uh, let's switch views here so you can see this a little better so there's kind of good news and bad news at this point you see that okay so what is the good news this thing is tracking right this thing is tracking so now let me quit out of that let me go to I think this is kind of a neat view here because you can see both of them so you see how it's keeping that in the center Okay, so what is the good news? It's tracking. What is the bad news? I think there's kind of like two pieces of bad news on, on, on what we're doing there. The first piece of bad news is, is that when the pin is still, the servo is going like this. And the other thing is if the pin moves outside the field of view, the program crashes. Well, why does it crash? Because like this servo can only go to 180 degrees and if you're trying to apply a signal of 190 to it then the program crashes so that's not good so we can fix that pretty easily but let's see if we can get a little bit more stable let's see if we can get a little bit more stability out of this and let me come back up here okay So what I say is, I am saying that, uh, let's see, okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys caught this or not, but you got to see that we're kind of comparing apples and oranges in this if statement, and that's part of our problem. And that is, is that uh, what we write to the servo pan and tilt is in what, is in what units pan and tilt is in degrees okay so I can apply a different degree rotation pan and tilt is in degrees but if we look at uh, object X and object Y <coughs> object X and object Y are not in degrees object X and object Y are in pixels and one pixel is not one degree and in fact one pixel is way smaller than one degree and so we're kind of comparing apples and oranges here now we're not going to go in and do a lot of trigonometry because if you do control systems right they'll sort of fix themselves in cases like this but the problem is one degree is way way bigger than one pixel and so I don't want to change things this big let's just say I say like 0.2 like what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the angle by 0.2 all right and then 0.2 now what might happen is what might happen this might crash because now we could be applying a float to the changing the servo angle here and I don't know if this thing will take a float but we can just try and if it doesn't we'll just int, if it crashes we'll just int those two values so let's give it a try here I'm going to right mouse click and run Python file and terminal you notice I'm drinking more hot coffee today it's a little cold outside but we do have our iced coffee in reserve okay so now if we look at this I think this is working better okay it's a little less glitchy okay but what else is true it's a whole lot slower do you see how it's less glitchy but it's a lot slower but it seems to be a little more stable ah okay same thing it went out of range so let's fix that out of range business <clears throat> you know like if we're applying here kit dot servo zero angle equals let's say a hundred and eighty five it's gonna crash the program so what we need to do is we need to fix that so I'm gonna say if error uh, I'm sorry if uh, what do I need to do there the problem is if pan or tilt is not in the right range is when that problem happens so we're gonna fix that and we're gonna say I'm not looking at error I'm gonna say if pan is greater than 180 
then what do you want to happen? Just say pan equal 180. And so what will happen is the servo will move to that point and then it won't go any further and you'll just see your object move off the screen but it won't crash the program. But you need to notify the user that what? Print. You need to notify them that pan out of pan out of range. Okay. Now, what else do we need to check? Uh, uh. Okay, what else do we need to do? And I think I can just kind of copy and paste this to make it faster. What's the other thing that would cause a problem? Control C, Control V. If pan is what? Less than zero, then make pan zero. All right, and it's still pan is out of range. Okay, so then let's come in here and let's paste that again. Okay, and this time we need to do tilt. If tilt is greater than 180, then make tilt equal to 180, and this time it would be what? It would be tilt out of range. All right, and then we can copy that. Control C and come down here, Control V. And this time we're going to say if tilt is less than zero, then tilt should be zero. So this should keep it from crashing. So let's run this thing and see what happens. Switch into the ice coffee. Oh, okay, there it goes. Okay, so it's trying to lock on to this thing. Okay, so let's bring it on over here. And it is really going slow, but it is tracking. Okay, so remember how it's telling you the problem is you've got an issue of stability versus uh, speed. And here we're doing pretty good on speed. Okay, I mean, we're doing pretty good on stability. Okay, but you see now I am out of range. Like, do you see here how it's saying out of range, but it is not crashing. So we fix that problem. Okay, but the the good news is that this is pretty. This is pretty stable. Let me come back to this view over here. Okay, you see this is this is pretty stable, but the problem is what it's slow. Okay, and what's the problem with being that slow? Okay, the problem with being that slow is what if I did that? Now it's lost, you see. So you've got to keep up with it faster than that. All right, so we kind of like that it's stable, but it's not very snappy. It's really sort of uh, not very snappy at all. So what I want to do is I'm going to quit out of this. And what we want to see is we want to see that you can kind of do a control system based on the dumb way that we just did it. Like if it's too big, make it smaller. If it's too small, make it bigger. But the problem is as we get down to one degree is a pretty big motion okay and we don't want to sit there when we're really pointing at it going left and right and left and right we want it to stop doing that <clears throat> also what do we want well if we're way far off you know if the pan error is large we don't want to move it by one we want to move it by big number okay in fact what we want to do is we want to move it by something that is proportional to the error. So if the error is big, it's going to move a large amount. Well, now the error is smaller. Well, next we can move it a smaller amount. So you want to be proportional to the error and kind of like you can then play around with what the proportionality constant is. And if you make the proportionality constant too large, it's just going to be unstable. It's going to lose control. If you make it too small, it's going to be very slow. And so kind of like one thing you can try is is to sort of take out like half the error. So whatever the error is, 
the change would be like enough to take care of half of that error. And that would be kind of a good starting point. So let's go back over here to this view. All right. And now let's come up here and let's get rid of this nonsense. <clears throat> because this is not a good way to do a control system. So we are going to take that out and we are going to come up with a better way of doing a control system. Uh, and what we're going to do is we are going to say if... Uh, okay, now I'm going to say if the... Uh, Okay, this is what I'm going to just be doing. And I'm wondering exactly what is happening here. Okay, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say if the error in pan is greater than... Uh, no, I don't want to do that. Let's see here. Give me just a second. I'm having to think about control systems in real time here, which is not always the easiest. Okay, so if the error in pan Okay, I'm going to fix a couple of things right off the bat. If the error in pan is small, I'm not going to do anything because I don't want to just be sitting there going back and forth like that. And so if the error in pan is less than 15, okay, if the error in pan is less than 15 pixels, I am not going to do anything. Okay, I'm not going to do anything. So, and in fact, in either direction, so I'm going to say if the absolute value of the error in pan <coughs> uh, is less than 15, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, I'm only going to change it if the error in pan is greater than 15 pixels. If the error, like if I'm, if the center of the object is almost in the center of the screen within 15 pixels, which is really, really close, don't do anything. That way it won't sit there and try to fix something that it's not going to be able to fix. So if the absolute value in the error in pan is greater than 15, then pan equals pan minus error pan. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a proportionality constant. And I'm just going to say like, let's say 43, okay? And, and that's because remember, one degree it, the error in pan, you know, the the the, you know, the the error is in pixels, and what do I want to ap uh, apply is an angle, and so I'm going to scale that way down by saying pan is equal to pan minus error pan divided by 43. Okay, what's the other one we got to worry about? If the absolute value of the error in tilt is greater than 15, then what I want to do is tilt is equal to tilt minus error tilt divided by 43, and we can play with those. All right, now why am I only having to use one parameter for pan? Because, okay, first of all, if I'm closer than 15 pixels, if I'm closer than 15 pixels, don't change anything. If I'm further off than 15 pixels, then do something. Well, pan is equal to pan minus error pan. Well, if error pan is positive, then this is going to make it smaller. Okay, if error pan is negative, it's going to make it bigger. So you see, you can kind of do it with one if statement for pan if you think about it because of that absolute value on the if statement. Pause the video and make sure that you understand that. Okay, so that should be absolute value. And same thing on tilt, that if the tilt, if the error is positive, which means it's too far, it's going to subtract a positive number, tilt is going to get smaller. If the error is negative, meaning that it's too small, 
tilt minus a minus is going to add. It's going to get bigger. See, see, this will zoom in. Now, if I have a huge error, I'm going to apply a huge change in tilt. If I have a small error, I'm going to apply a small change. All right, let's see now if this thing is going to run. So I'm going to come over here, right mouse click, run Python file in terminal. Okay, it seems like it's found that. Now, what do you notice? No jitter. Huh? Huh? You see, when you use a little smarts, you can fix these problems. Like, what did you see we were moving by a degree when we were already kind of in the right position? So, man, if you're not 15 pixels off, don't worry about it. Okay, now I am, if you look down here uh, in the lower left, I am going to try to tune in these numbers a little better because I am getting some stuff I don't like there. Okay, that got rid of a lot of the noise there. Okay, and that's looking good. Now, let's look and see what happens. Wow, did you see that? Let me give you a better view here where you can really see both of those things, okay? Now, do you see how I'm locked on? Boom. Now, you see, I am getting a little bit of overshoot, like it goes past it and then comes back if I move it quickly. So, like if I come way over here, you can see that there is a little bit of ringing in it. What that would mean is, that would mean that you would really want to go to, you would really, it means that you're, when you divided by 43, you, you should divide by a larger number and then you wouldn't overshoot. So let's try that because, and this is quite exciting. So you can learn a little bit about control systems here. So let's say instead of 43, let's go 75 and 75. Now with this, I'm thinking it's not going to overshoot, right? But it might get a little bit too slow, okay? You probably, I now see, probably were not able to see what I just did. But let me show you here. What I did was I took the pan divided by 75, the tilt divided by 75, the pan divided by 75, the tilt divided by 75, instead of, okay, instead of 43. So this is going to make it a little bit more stable, I think. So let's come and let's try running this thing. Okay, so it has locked on there, and now instead of looking at the code, I will show you this bigger. All right, and again, I want to zoom in a little bit to get rid of some of that noise on my parameters there. That is looking good. Okay, so as we're sitting there, we don't have anything. So now as I move it, you notice now it's not overshooting. Wow, this is really working good. <laughs> Look at that. What if I lay, oh, you could, okay. So let's see here. Let me just kind of put it down here. Okay. Is that not pretty slick or what? You see, I can make it go a little bit too fast where it loses its tracking because that was the downside of going to the divide by 75. It can't go quite as fast. Let me see if I can come down a little further. Okay, let's say I move it here. I like it if I lose it now, it doesn't crash. The program doesn't crash if I lose it.
you see I moved too fast oh I, and I kind of had it covered so I moved too fast and it lost it but then it just stops right it doesn't crash I could sit and play with this all day. Guys, this is really, now we're really doing artificial intelligence, right? We are training it to track an, op, we're training it on an object, the blue pen cap, and then we are tracking our object of interest uh, using the servos, okay? Now you could say, well, you know, that's not really all that impressive because you're tracking based on color. Yeah, but you know, it's also easy to track on motion. And we're going to go in and we're going to start learning other things that you can track on. You can track on color, you can track on motion, you can track on shape, and then we can start training it to recognize things, you know, based on what they look like, like a face or a cat or something like that, and then we can track on that, because it's two parts, recognizing and then tracking. Well, we have got the tracking part working, and we've got a simple way to recognize something, and then we can go to a more complicated thing. Man, that is, is is exciting. Is anybody else as excited about this as I am? This is like really, really, really exciting to me. Okay, let's see. That is just pretty cool. I feel like this is kind of the culmination of a lot of the work that we have uh, that we've been doing here in the first twenty-one in the first uh, <clears throat> thirty-one lessons, and I hope you guys have been playing along. I hope that you are having as much fun with this as I am. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to keep going with this, man. This is like to me a milestone. This is this is kind of like a watershed lesson because we're to the point that the other thing I like about this is is that we're interacting with the real world. You can do. You can learn artificial intelligence and open CV just even like by, you know, doing it on your PC and you can write programs and doing things. But the thing about the Jetson Nano, we have access to those GPIO pins. And with access to the GPIO pins, we're not just observing the environment, we are interacting with it. And through the GPIO pins, we are controlling those servos. Well, you could put other things on the servo. There's a lot more that you could do. So what are things that we can do in the future? We can put some different things on the servo servo besides a camera we can control things besides a servo and we're going to be getting smarter and smarter and smarter about learning how to recognize objects not just based on color but based on other things okay guys i would have really appreciated if you would leave me a comment down below i'd appreciate if you would give me a thumbs up this has been a lot of work to do these videos i'd really appreciate a thumbs up if you haven't already think about subscribing to the channel when you subscribe to the channel make sure that you click the bell so that you'll get notifications when new material is uh, is posted and then I would again like to just give a shout out to you guys that are helping me out on patreon you guys are a real encouragement to me okay I cannot resist it I'm just gonna sit here and play with this a little bit just because it is so much fun it is so much fun Okay. All right. Paul McCorder from toptechboy.com. I will talk to you guys later.